The conclusions drawn from uh, Einstein coefficients are first one, the amount of energy that we are supplying to the system should be high and second one, we have to maintain the population inversion. So what is meant by population inversion? In general, the number of available atoms in the ground state are more than the excited state. We have more number of atoms present in uh, E1 level. We don't have any uh, atoms present in E2 level unless we supply the energy here. So by supplying the energy, the atoms, so in general N1 is greater than N2. So to produce the stimulated emission process, we should have number of electrons in the excited should be greater than number of electrons present in the ground state. So we have to maintain this condition. Maintaining more electrons in the excited state than in the ground state is uh, known as population inversion. I repeat, the, the maintaining more electrons in the excited state than the ground state. In general, we have N1 is greater than N2, which is not required. We have to maintain N2 greater than N1. So maintaining this condition, maintaining more atoms in the excited state than in the ground state is known as population inversion. So we have to send the atoms from ground state to excited state. We have to keep an atom in excited state. So to keep an atom, we need to supply some amount of energy to the atoms which are present in the ground state. So by supplying the energy to the atoms, atoms will absorb the energy and goes to the excited state. Supplying the atoms and raising the atoms from ground state to excited state is known as pumping. So we will discuss about this pumping later in detail. At present, we will discuss about population inversion. So, to understand this population inversion with the help, I am going to explain this population inversion with the help of energy level diagram, ELDs. So, let us take three energy levels. E1 is the ground state. Let us call E2 as the metastable state. And this E3 as excited state. So metastable state means where the electron, where the atoms are spending more time. So now in, at present or in general, all the atoms are present in ground state. By supplying some amount of energy rho nu, remember the rho nu should be equals to uh, the gap between E1 to E3. So E3 minus E1 is equals to H nu 1, 3. So we have to supply amount of energy which is equal to the gap between E1 and E3 level then only atoms will go to the E3 level. So by supplying the energy atoms will absorb the energy and goes to excited state first like this. So all the atoms present in excited state now. Since the atoms will never spend much time there because it is not a metastable state. So automatically it will come to the E2 level by a non-radiative transition like this. Now, we have more atoms present in E2 level because it is a metastable state. Now, in this particular situation, the number of atoms present in E2 level is more than the number of atoms present in E1 level. This situation is known as population inversion because we are maintaining more atoms in the excited state than in the ground state e is called population inversion which is achieved now. So to achieve the population inversion the first condition is pumping is required we have to send pumping means uh, we have to send the atoms from ground state to excited state by supplying sufficient amount of energy and next uh, we have to take uh, or the material must contain the metastable state where the electrons or atoms has to spend more time then we can achieve the population inversion. So after achieving the population inversion we can easily supply energy to the atoms which are in the excited state. So while it is coming down to the ground state, we can have a laser light. So this concept is known as population inversion.